Lord, we want to thank you for what you want to do here this morning, Father. Um, Lord, we do. We don't want to just gather in this place, Father, but we want to be out there. Lord, we want to be out on the streets, Lord, and we want to be, we want to be Christ. We want to be the body of Christ, Lord, on this island and beyond, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Those, uh, thanks, thank, thank the Lord for those testimonies. Um, and that's good. We've got, to, we've got to keep on thanking God. I mean, we, we hear testimonies every week of just how good God is, but we've just got to keep thanking the Lord for what He's doing amongst us. And that, that's part of just the increase. It's not just the testimony, but just giving praise and always being thankful to the Lord for what He's doing. Um, Andrea, while we were just standing up in front of you this morning, I just saw this picture um, of you as you were sitting there and the, the, the cross was behind you. And I just felt the Lord was saying that there's going to come just a greater um, revelation of what the cross means to you and, um, and just what Christ has done on the cross. And there's going to come a greater revelation. You're going to enter into the fullness of what Jesus has done for you. And, um, and just out of that is going to come also the experience of you just being able to speak from your revelation of what God's doing in your own life through the power of the cross. And, and you're going to be able to be a mouthpiece of, of just the reality of the cross in your own life. And Sophia, uh, so, Sophie, when, when I was standing, I saw you, um, you, you raised your hands and I saw these, these chains that were broken. But I felt the Lord was saying, it's not just the, the, the breaking of, of chains in your own life, but I felt the Lord was saying that there, He's commissioning you to actually go and, and release those who have been also bound up. And, um, and, and I feel the Lord saying there's a ministry on your life of breaking chains over people's lives. And um, it's like when Jesus, you know, when he took the five loaves and the two fish and he held it up and there was just this multiplication. It's just you taking those people and lifting them up before the Lord and seeing God just break bondages over people's lives. Amen. And then I, I don't remember the gentleman, your name in the back. Um, your Ross, Ross, I, I saw a picture of you, and you were um, you were standing in a river, um, and behind you was just this large, large dam, and um, I felt the Lord saying that you've experienced a measure of the Holy Spirit, but there is just so much more that the Lord is bringing you into, just a greater measure of His Spirit, like what you're experiencing is almost like the the ankle deep measure, but the Lord say, says there's there's a a, a dam behind you of just so much more that the, that the Lord wants to bring you into of the things of the Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Um, there's an increase coming in our life. There's an increase. Um, God is speaking to us. God is stirring up faith on the inside of us. Um, and and we, we're looking to the more. And that's why we have testimonies, is because God is bringing the increase and if we've experienced something here, we know that he can do much greater things. Amen. And one of the things um, you know, we're encouraged to do is pour into somebody's life that is younger in the Lord than you and make sure that there's somebody who's older in the Lord than you that is pouring into your life. Always be in that place where you are pouring into somebody else's life and allow somebody to pour into your life. Because the, when, you, when you hear somebody else's testimony, or somebody who has gone before you, has experienced greater things, that brings your faith up. And at the same time, you're just pouring out to somebody else um, uh, who's, who's just young in the Lord and encouraging that person. So I want to encourage you to look for those kind of relationships in your life where you are pouring out into somebody who's, who's younger in the Lord than you and somebody who's actually pouring into your life as well. Amen. Get into those kind of relationships. Remember, this is the year of the manifestation of hope. Okay, we've been speaking about it. God's been increasing um, uh, 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 the hope and he says this is the year of the manifestation of hope. What you've been hoping for is what God wants to bring into existence this year. Amen. 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 Yes. <laughs> So how, he, how God takes us from the depths and he, puts it and he, and he, and he brings us to the heights. Amen. He, he takes us to the heights. Let me just read um, ex, um, Exodus. Yeah. Exodus 15. It 
says, you will bring them in and plant them on the mountain of your inheritance. The place, O Lord, you made for your dwelling. The sanctuary, O Lord, your hands have established. We are the Lord's sanctuary. Amen. We are the Lord's dwelling. The Lord says he's brought us in so that he can plant us on the mountain of his inheritance for our lives. And that's, that's what God wants to do. Just bring us into a greater revelation of the inheritance that is there for us. We see the picture in Matthew of Jesus sleeping in the boat. And, um, and the storm is raging. And, um, and the disciples are getting more and more anxious in that boat. And, um, and, and it says, and the waves are overcoming the boat. And Jesus is asleep. And so they wake Jesus up. And you know the story. You know the story in Matthew 8. But, I, but I, want to, I, want to, I want to say to us, we need to start changing our perspective. Because what we are doing is, is a lot of times we are in our boat and we feel like life is, is overwhelming. We, th- we feel like things are overtaking us. And it feels like it's just, it's just coming into the boat. And it feels like we might want to sink. And we, we're shouting out to Jesus. We're saying, wake up. Are you awake? Aren't we? Don't we sometimes do that? We sort of say, Jesus, are you awake? Do you know what's going on in my life? Wake up. Do you think the Lord's asleep? Do you think the Lord, the Lord is not watching over our life? And he turns around to the disciples and he says, you of little faith. And then he demonstrates and he speaks to that storm and he says, be quiet. And there's something about that that the Lord is, saying to, is, is wanting to say to us is that there, we have an authority to start speaking to those things. And I think when we rise up with, the, with that authority on the inside of us, just sort of like saying, no, I'm not allowing this thing to overcome me. I'm not going to allow the waves to fill my boat. And you know, there's times when I've sort of like, I've, be, I've prayed through stuff and, I, and I'd sort of lie there, sort of like praying through stuff quite apathetically. And actually, all you're doing is you're mouthing. You're mouthing the words, you're saying stuff because you know that's what you're supposed to say. But actually, you're lying there in unbelief. And there's times in the Lord when something just rises up on the inside of me and I say, No, this is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and I'm going to be glad in it. And I start declaring the word of God. I say, This is a day of breakthrough. And, and, and breakthrough comes. You see, there's something about us having to rise up with an authority, something that says, no, hold on, I'm not just going to mouth stuff, but I'm going to believe it. I'm going to walk in faith. And, and, um, and that's just stirring up the faith, of, faith that's, that's on the inside of us. Stepping into the zone, as it were. You know, stepping into your heavenly, heavenly place, your heavenly realm that you're supposed to rule and reign with, with Jesus. Do you know, we, we, we walk in the flesh, don't we? We walk in the flesh and we allow things just to happen. The Lord is saying, walk in the zone. Walk in the spirit. Walk in that place of your authority. Start seeing things from a different perspective. Amen. Start looking at life. Start looking at circumstances from a completely different perspective. See, you're in your boat and the waves are coming over you. But no, you've got to get up and say, no, there's a, I'm going to look at this from a different perspective. I have authority over this thing. And we can look at everything like that from our kingdom position. Do you know that it says in, in, in Mark 4 verse 19, it says that the worries of, this, of the worries of this world, and if we are overcome by the worries of this world, makes the word of God unfruitful. Do you see what I'm saying? It, it, takes, it, takes, the word of, it takes the word and it makes it unfruitful. So when God has spoken over your life, take that word and make it fruitful. Don't allow the worries of this world to, to, to steal away God's word for your life. See, that's why we've got to take the prophetic word. We've got to take the word that God's spoken over our life. And, and don't be discouraged by what you see with the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the natural eye or what you hear with the natural ear. Don't be discouraged by that because if you are, it's going to snatch away just the fruitfulness of that word. It's to take the word and say, no, I'm going to start looking through the eyes of that word and start declaring it and make the word of God fruitful in your life and not allow the worries of this world to overcome you. It's stepping, it's stepping into that place where there's no lack 
It's stepping in that, into that place where there is an abundance of God's provision and God's goodness for everything that we need for life and life in abundance. Amen. And it's stepping into our zone. See, the kingdom of heaven is like a hidden treasure. Amen. And it says so in Matthew 13, 44, the kingdom of heaven is like a hidden treasure. And we've got to seek it out. We've got to seek out the inheritance. We've got to seek out what God has planned and purposed for our lives. And when He speaks over us with a, with a, with a prophetic word and, 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 and a promise over our life, it's almost like the Lord has just given you a treasure map. Amen. And it's for you to take out that treasure map, the word of God, and say, ha, ha, this is leading me to the treasure. And it's just your guide. And the Lord's saying, stick, stick to that, stick to that, stick to that, stick to that, stand on that, stand on that, and find the hidden treasure. I just love Jenna Lynn's uh, testimony last week. You know, she, she stood in that, but I got, oh, I've only got 10 euros in my pocket. But I'm going to decree, I'm going to say that my God is going to provide. Amen. Amen. <laughs> She's still glowing. <laughs> There's an anointing on 500 euro notes, people. <laughs> okay, God's, God's, God's got a printing press and it just prints out 500 notes. <laughs> I've heard so many people who've said, I've never even seen a 500 note. And how many of these things just start appearing? <laughs> Praise the Lord. But there's Jedalyn. She knows and she starts decreeing that God is able to meet that need even though there's only 10 euros in her pocket. And God sends it with a love letter about his faithfulness. Isn't that lovely? And that's just it. She's stepping into the zone. She's stepping into her kingdom authority, her, her, her daughtership, your sonship. She's stepping into that place, declaring what is not as though it were. Amen. Amen. Bringing into existence. It's like calling the future into the now. It's saying, yes, that's, that's, that's my, kingdom, my kingdom resource. And I'm calling it into existence right now, into this place. That's faith. It's bringing the substance out of that which you are hoping for. All right? And it's seeing the substance of what we're hoping for. Hebrews 11.1 1. God kisses you with his blessings. That's just God's love. Just as, you know, Jenilyn said, yes, it was a love letter. It was a love letter from the Lord. She opened it and there the Lord spoke to her about his faithfulness and his goodness. And with it, he meets the need. Blessing her. His kisses are like blessings. Is he in your boat? Is the Lord in your boat with you? Do you know, if there's anybody here this morning and you just don't feel like the Lord is in your boat and you're just walking a lonely, lonely, hopeless journey, then I want to pray with you afterwards. Anybody here this morning that just feels the Lord is not in my boat, I want to pray with you. See, it's about changing our perspective constantly. It's about looking at my circumstances from a different perspective. It's with faith eyes. It's with kingdom eyes. It's from a kingdom perspective. We've got to look at, look at yourself from a kingdom perspective. So it's, very easy to, it's quite easy to look at other people from a kingdom perspective and, and look at somebody and say, yeah, look, I can see the Lord really loves you and God's got a purpose and a destiny for your life and, and so on. But look at your own life. Go, to, go look in the mirror and, and, and ask God, what does is, what is He see of your life? Look at yourself and your own life through a kingdom perspective. Look at your background through a kingdom perspective. Look at your past through a kingdom perspective. Because God is a redeeming God. Amen. And He redeems everything. 
Your past has shaped you. Your past has brought you to the place, the personality, the uniqueness, the loveliness of who you are. No matter how bad that past was, it's shaped you. It's given facets on your life like a diamond that reflects all kinds of things that somebody else will not be able to reflect. Your past, God has redeemed and, it's, and he's made it beautiful. Amen. So be able to look at your past even. Look at the way you were treated by others. Just look at all that through a kingdom perspective. Change the way you look at life. Look at your future into that and ask God just to speak into your future. Look at your children. Look at your relatives, your family. You see, when we, when, I love the way when the Alums were here and they spoke about how, um, about the prophetic. And it's, the prophetic, is, they say, it's just very simple. It's like, I'm going to, I'm going to go and visit Fina. And so I, I go to, I go to um, God and I say, I'm going to go and visit Fina. She's your daughter. What would you like to say to her? And that's, like, that's really what it's like, isn't it? It's, it's like going to someone's, somebody's father and saying, I'm going to go visit your daughter. What would you like to say to them? And that's just the prophetic. It's just looking at somebody saying, Father, what do you want to say to this person? What do you want to encourage them with? And when you start looking from a father's perspective, from God the Father's perspective of life and everything, you're able just to speak life into that place. You're able to speak hope into people's lives. And you can declare. You can declare things that are not into existence. Amen? Amen. Just Julia's testimony, just that little girl running. Now, Praise God for the phone call. I mean, she wouldn't have known what was happening. But in faith, when she was praying, she was declaring what is not into existence. And the phone call confirmed that. Amen. And that's what you've what got to do. Even if you're not going to get the phone call, just know. I am declaring things that are not into existence because God has given me the authority to do that. God has given me the authority to speak into situations and change them. We are not of little faith. We want God to increase that faith. Amen. In this place, in our life. Those who hope in the Lord, those who eagerly wait for, those who are expectantly waiting for the Lord will rise up on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Why? It's because you're seeing everything from a completely different perspective. You see, why do we get weary? Why do we become so lethargic? Is because we are weighed down by the worries of this world that are snatching away the fruitfulness of God's word over our lives. And the Lord is saying, change your perspective and do not allow just the worries to weigh you down and steal away the fruitfulness of God's word. It's to change your perspective. Those who wait, who hope and eagerly expect will rise up on wings like eagles. They'll have a completely different perspective on life. And when you've got that kind of perspective, that's when you can run this race with perseverance and you can see things and you will not grow weary. Got to live in the realm of hope. And just stir up our hope. Stir up the hope. It's Father, what do you see? What do you want to say to me? God, what do you see in this situation? And I want to just do that practically. You know, we can, we can look, we can look at, at a situation and, and, and what we see in the natural could be one thing. But what God wants to do is when he wants to let us see things from his perspective. Amen. So I want to just do a little practical demonstration here. And it's nothing, um, nothing weird. We are family, so don't, don't worry. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, Jane Ann, you come sta stand here. Donald, you come stand here. Okay, I'm going to choose two people for now. And um, 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to just ask you to look at these two people. Okay? We can, we can judge them in the, in the natural. Right? Lovely, lovely people. Good looking. <laughs> but God sees even more. Amen? God sees even more. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you just to look at these two people and say, God, what do you see when you look at them? What do you see? And, um, and I'm just going to, because I'm asking you all to do this, okay? There's no spectators here this morning. So I'm just going to sort of randomly choose somebody here this morning to come and share what you see regarding other, other of these two. Okay, so Christos, what do you see? It can just be one word. <laughs> Lovely daughter of God. Amen. Amen. That's encouraging. Good. <laughs> Anybody else? Let me just see. Um, hmm. Caroline. Got your eyes closed. <laughs> Come, share with us what you see. Donald, you walk by faith and not by sight. And you walk tall in faith. Amen. Amen. I've got something very simple for both of them. Oh. Um, with Donald, I said... I looked at the Lord. The Lord, he wasn't smiling and he wasn't angry. It was just a normal frown on his face. I said, Lord, what do you think of Donald? Normal frown on his face. <laughs> normal frown on his face. That normal frown. Oh. Yeah, just like normal. He wasn't smiling. He wasn't angry. And I said, Lord, what do you think of Donald? And he just went, he just, and he just closed his eyes and went, ah, oh, Donald, like that. And then with Jane Ann, I said, Lord, what do you think of Jane Ann? And he says, when she... <laughs> He says, when she, pl- when she worships me, I'll wipe away a tear. Oh, praise God. I got two things. For Jane Ann, you the waves. And um, in the waves, they're very peaceful. They're very beautiful. But there's also power in waves, and there's power in you. And you do bring peace, and you bring beauty to people in their lives, and that's how God sees you as well. But he also, his power works through you. Amen. Okay. Amen. And with Donald, sorry. No, I go. Yes, go. go. <laughs> Donald, I uh, got like a stick and I immediately thought spear because you're African, you know. And, uh, <laughs> like, you know, uh, a warrior. warrior. Yeah. But uh, in that stick, okay, I got um, strength, but I also got a sense of righteousness. There's a righteousness in you that will not bend or break to other people and what they say, but you will stand. Okay. Amen. Yes. Sorry. This uh, is good. This is good. I just want to add the same. I, I, I had the picture of a warrior about Donald. Donald. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. George. Uh, well, I saw them both dressed in white and glowing, walking down the aisle towards Jesus. Praise God. That's good. <laughs> All right, we're going to do some science facts. Um, I hope my facts are right, but it's the men who carry out the bloodline. And Jane Ann has all these sons. And I believe that God is just so, he blessed you with sons so they can carry out his work. Because That's lovely. you guys are just so, I don't know how to explain it. He tells me that your family is going to spread and you're going to have the largest Christian bloodline. Um, and Donald, so. I feel like you are going to be blessed with many sons as well. Putting it out there, so good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> Very good, Marissa. That's lovely words. Let's keep them here. <laughs> Jenna, I saw you on top of a mountain and a bright blue sky and a very clear, clear day. And um, you were wondering whether you should jump. 
and um, you did. But you did this amazing skydive off the mountain. And I just saw, I mean, it was actually beautiful because it's like um, you just trusted God that, you know, you're going to land. But there's an amazing view and it's absolutely beautiful. So I don't know, you know, you didn't know where to land, but you just went for it. Amen. Let's swap. Let's swap, people. You guys can sit down. Let's get Gulen. Will you come to the front? Aki. This is nice, isn't it? It's just, it's blessing people, just seeing what God sees and be able to just bless people. <laughs> now, wasn't that nice? That was just an illustration of being able to look at something from a different perspective. You know, we could have looked at their natural gifting and who they are from a natural side, but God wanted to speak out something different. And we've got to look at that and we've got to be able to do that in every area of our life. You can do it. Each one of us can do it. Is say, Lord, what do you want to say into this situation that I'm going through? And um, so just as we close now, we go into a time of worship. I want you just to look around the congregation and, and just ask God, Lord, is there something that you want me to say to somebody this morning? So while we're worshiping, just be aware that the Lord can use you. And, um, and this is a good place to practice. So that even when you're out on the street, God can do that with you too, with somebody's life. Amen. So Father, we want to thank you for your presence here. Lord, we, we want to thank you that, Lord, we are people who are to step into the zone of our sonship and our daughtership. Lord, and to walk into that with that authority, seeing things from a different perspective. And so, Father, I want to ask that this is going to be an exciting journey this week as you open our eyes to see things that are not and declare them as though they were and see the substance of that which we hope for manifest in Jesus' name. Amen.